The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to the Mike Wagner Show at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. It allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And they'll distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios. Fast, affordable, customer designs, and all the competition. 303 3960. That's 1 303 3960. Your email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner. 10% first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show, you can be here on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, Radio Public. Also on iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more, and over 35 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful gentleman from the other side of the pond who's got a brand new EP coming out. And he's also had quite a few as well, too. Um, you know, a couple of Zephyrs, Leo's guitar, and um, also started in 04 as the Deep Impactors. And he's got, he was actually influenced by Dire Straits. We heard money for nothing, chicks for free. And he says, this is what I'm going to do, but money is going to be everything. And I'll get the chicks whenever I want. Also <laughs> influenced by some earlier... Um, Blues guitars like Stevie Ray, Vaughn, Eric Clapton, John Lee Hooker, Buddy Guy, Johnny Winter, Muddy Waters, and more. And, of course, this guy's on a caravan to bring out great music. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the other side of the pond in beautiful Finland. Ladies and gentlemen, from Izzy's caravan is Daisy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, man. How's it going? Glad to be here, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm doing great. So, yeah, you seem pretty modulated and pumped up, and I guess you probably need some coffee, too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always a little, uh, you know, uh, excited to be on uh, on these radio shows because it's so cool, man, especially now with this whole pandemic thing. Uh, it's so great to uh, touch base with people around the world and, uh, you know, chit-chat. And, uh, you know, it, it's like such a getaway, right? It's a little bit of a release as well. Uh so it's uh, this is the new uh, new 
wave of uh, social connection, I guess. And, uh, uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's cool to be here. Yeah, uh, and of course, you know, getaway merely went getting away, but now it's like our getaway is just, you know, more, not just six feet of social distancing, but also just uh, reaching out to people around the world. You're right, and you don't need to leave your home, which is great. So, <laughs> yeah, well, it really works out for me sometimes because I tend to, I'm a little bit of an introvert anyway. So, uh, so yeah, staying at home isn't, you know, uh, that bothersome for me as it might be for most other people. I mean, I'm so, uh, uh, especially over the last few weeks, anyway, being you know, uh, essentially living in the studio, getting this uh, this record done, and uh, so I was uh, honestly just stuck in the studio for so long. Uh, I didn't sort of even really uh, have the time or the concerns to worry about going out or anything. Uh, you know, but yeah, it's uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. it's cool. Well, well, we're glad you're here as well, too, and uh, having a little cup of coffee or tea or beer or wine, wherever you are in part of the world, and we're at 24-7, 365, and you're on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, you you, ha- you had a few of um, EPs out as well, too, Leo's Guitar, Zephyr's um, debut, and also you also um, had a couple of those as well, too. You made your, impact, your debut with the Deep Impactors in 04, and um, also influences, like, say, with... Um, Dire Straits, uh, Led Zeppelin, John Lee Hooker, and more. You've been in the business for quite some time. And before we get to all that with your uh, new EPs, and especially your latest, uh, tell us how you got started career-wise. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, to me, I always, uh, I, I'm so uh, so definitive in my origin point of where it all began. Uh, and it's so easy to recollect. And I guess primarily because, uh, you know, growing up um, in, uh, in sort of a couple of decades gone by, um, I think culture was a bit more um, structured in the way it was sort of transmitted from whether it was film or whether it was music. And, uh, and one of the cool things was uh, the connection we had with the generation before us, right? So it wasn't like I was, you know, I was... I was in my teenage years, I was, that was the nineties and stuff, but I still had that sort of connection to the music that came way before me, which was, uh, what essentially say my parents were listening to or the generation before that was. So that level of sort of bleed through that we had and that connectivity with previous generations, um, that way culture was a lot more, like I said, it was more regimented in how it was transmitted. Because again, the medium was just what, CDs or, you know, prior to that record and so on and so forth. So you always had that material artifact to fall back upon, whether it was your dad's CD collection or something along those lines. So anyway, so, you know, I still remember uh, my, the first movie I ever saw was Star Wars and the first song I've listened to was Money for Nothing. Um, and again, it's such an on- sonic onslaught, right, for a four-year-old kid. That I was like, all right, well, I guess from that moment, I always knew the guitar would, would have some role in my life because, uh, you know, I was always like, wow, that's what I want to do, right? I mean, uh, that's got to be the coolest job in the world. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out that way, right? So fast forward, you know, uh, 2000s, uh, living in Canada, had this band, three-piece band called uh, Deep and Mars Watts and the Deep Impactors. Uh, you know, the name goes to show how much uh, cheap beer we were consuming at that point. And uh, uh, the music was nowhere near as good as we thought it was, uh, you know, again. So uh, that didn't last for long. But then, uh, believe it or not, I, I actually dropped out of music. And so for a decade or so, I didn't even touch the guitar. And, uh, again, just being very jaded, disillusioned with the whole music scene, life got in the way, uh, making ends meet, all that stuff, all that jazz. And then um, a few years ago, it was as if, you know, that kid inside me, I mean, again, once you're in the rap, that sort of rock and roll lifestyle, right, it just never leaves you, right? It, and after a while, there's this sort of, aching, all right, you know, I got to do this at least once, right? I got to give this one more shot. And uh, and so I did, you know, I, I got back into it. But honestly, this time with a much more, uh, uh, much more appreciative and much more intensive uh, understanding of what blues and rock and roll really is and what it actually laid out before as a pathway to becoming a true blues musician, uh, even though mine is much more oriented towards rock 
still, I mean, I sort of use those blues influences, but what comes out is much more uh, rock and roll. Um, but this time it was uh, it was very, 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 uh, for lack of better words, it was very structured, right? And I, I, there was a definitive rationale that this is what I want to do and I'll give it one more shot. If nothing else, just for my own sort of therapeutic uh, appeasement, I guess. Um, so December 2019, I released uh, Leo's guitar. Um, uh, a couple of months later, I released my accidental EP called Zephyrs, um, which really wasn't part of the part of the plan. But it's you know again, it's such a mu- it's a much more melancholic experimental record. So I was like, but I was like, you know what? Uh, life's all about gambles, man. So I'll put it out there and. Um, and now I, I feel like I'm on a bit of a roll, right? Uh, I guess it was like a decade-long uh, collection of ideas that I, were just sort of circulating in my head, which are just coming out now on the guitar and music and stuff. And uh, so now I've got the third EP coming out, which is on the pole. But like I was telling you, this this record, though, I mean, you can hold me to this. I know every band, whenever they're releasing a new record, it's always the greatest record ever, right? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I read the uh, reviews all the time. They say best record yeah. ever, and it's like five, <laughs> ten years later. <laughs> it's yeah, 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 That's yeah, happened always- too many times. I'll tell you a story about off the air where, and where one reviewer said, this is the best record ever, and then ten years later. It's like one of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I know awesome. that feeling. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm so, and I call myself out on this one as well. So, so I'm sort of, you know, throwing out these guarantees as well. That look, you can, you know, 10, 15 years from now, you can, you can, you can ask me, but you know, with all this sort of connection of music that you have, which one's the one record that really was that one moment where you can look back and say that was my identity record and i think this one's going to be that because honestly when i when i finally finished the mixing and the the mastering and everything was done the production work was done i had such a hard time letting go because i i literally woke up and it was just done uh, last night and i woke up today morning and i had that sort of sense of there was this void right where all day i was just lying there staring at the ceiling saying what do i do today right Mm -hmm. uh so it's a, it's a great time to be chit-chatting about it because uh, I'm still, I guess I'm still experiencing some degree of withdrawal symptoms from these songs, right? Which are now no longer in my control, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll still, you know, you can hold me to this. I, I will still say this is my my identity record. You know, hopefully we're speaking sometime in the, you know, future. And uh, you can, you can quote, you know, quote me on this one. This will be my identity record. <laughs> At least this wasn't accidental like it was with Zephyrs. And, um, you know, you talked about uh, accidentally releasing Zephyrs. Was it where someone just went ahead and uh, put it out without your permission? Or was it just like, you know, I'm going to do something all of a sudden? Wait, I didn't want to do this. So, you know, how was it like accidental that you released Zephyrs? So that's what I was curious on. It sounds like a really good album. Yeah, it, it is. I oh, I love that record. It was. It's really. But it, in the in the sort of uh, I'd say in the transition or the chronological order, I would almost figure that so a record like that would probably come out maybe, you know, uh, having a few blues records behind me, right? And, you know, just trying a gamble or trying something different. But uh, you know, again, for this one, for Zephyrs as well, it's a. Uh, it, to the origin point, I still remember one night I was listening to, I'm a huge Tom Petty fan, right? Huge Tom Petty fan. And uh, so I was listening to his uh, his record called Echoes. And I love the title track of that. And it was on loop, right? So that song was playing and playing and playing. And I always, uh, you know, for the last, you know, decade or so, I had these, these couple of these ballads sitting in my, you know, which I'd written, but they were on the shelf. And uh, so I just, you know, I was so inspired at that point. I started recording this one track, which was called Zephyrs. And uh, one thing led to another. And so I ended up recording and just, I, to me, it sounded so good. Uh, right. I mean, your own music sounds phenomenal <laughs> to you, right? And it sounded so good. And I was like, you know what? Let me just carry on with this, right? I mean, I've, I'm on this, I've got this momentum and uh, I like that sort of melancholic uh, element to it. And, uh, next thing you know, so the, the, the entire EP is done, right? And uh, so I'll always sort of, uh, in a good way, I'll always uh, 
you know, in a very affectionate way, I'll always consider it my accidental EP in terms of the chronology where I was supposed to be going with, uh, with my music. Mm-hmm. And, and what was the idea of uh, come up with the name Zephyrs in the um, your, your release? What was the idea behind that? Uh, just the lyrics worked out that way, right? So I guess it was just trying to be a little bit more more pretentious with my with my lyrics, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Rather, than, I I still remember I was sitting and I was one of my buddies was previewing and he's like, "Why are you using why, why don't you just say breeze, right?" You know, I mean, that's what is happening. <laughs> I was like, "Come on, man! It sounds a little cooler, right? It's got a little bit more, <laughs> you know." Uh, but somehow Zephyr is makes it sounds a lot more intellectual than it actually is. Yeah, I was gonna say you put the Z and I think I was Zorro, you know, to put the Z on it. <laughs> yeah, 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 that would have been, you know, hype it up a little bit more, right? Yeah, like, you know. but even for that record, I mean, the fact that there's uh, Zephyrs itself is seven minutes long, and there's another track there, Holding Your Smile, which is eight minutes long, and you know, honestly, it was really interesting uh, coming back to music after this whole sort of hiatus. Uh, and not realizing that these sort of seven minute, eight minute tracks no longer really have a, have, I don't, I don't want to say selling point or an audience, but in general, I mean, it, it, you know, I guess for the purists, they'll tend to be a bit more appreciative of these songs. And that was a little bit of a gamble that I did take, but I did want to negotiate uh, the, the entire process and the, the, the the songwriting process. So I went along with it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, as accidental as it was, it, it, it still means a lot to me. Uh, because, and plus, uh, and plus, you also released uh, South of Yesterday, Tracy's Ballard, and um, Dorian's Lament as well, too. And, um, and, and of course, you got uh, two in the band. And, uh, you know, tell us about the rest of the songs. Yeah, that, that's uh, a couple of them off the Leo's Guitar EP, which came out in, uh, in December. So that had uh, Two in the Bush, Lighting the Howling, Dorian's Lament, and um, uh, Leo's Guitar itself. That's an instrumental title track. And that, the, the, the title track actually started it off. And that's, it's got a really interesting story to it. Because again, honestly, I mean, this time around, uh, and I, you know, I'm not uh, ashamed of this at all in the sense I... You know, to me, I think the rediscovery of, uh, of blues music was a game changer. Uh, I, <clears throat> part of me owes, I mean, uh, owes so much to going back to history and getting a lot of these records out, re-experiencing them with a sense of appreciation, uh, appreciation that I didn't have before. And so... An academic level as well. I was so fascinated going back to the roots of everything. You know, I mean, you take a song like Rolling and Tumbling, right? And you look at the history behind it. So whether it's listening to Clapton's version, then going back to Robert Johnson's version, then going back even mm. further, further. And suddenly I was like, wow, there's this, um, again, I keep saying this beyond this macro world, there's this, uh, this whole catalog of music out there that needs to be preserved, right? Um, and so from, from a, at a very, very microscopic level, I mean, that's what the intent is for me as well, that somehow take that tradition, preserve it, not having that fear of being traditional about how I write my music and how I record and how I put it out there in the hope that, you know, those who like that level of purity will take that will take my music at least, that look, at least he's trying, right? That there's a deliberate move to preserve that tradition. Um, so, so yeah, Leo's guitar. And in fact, Leo's guitar is named for Leo Fender because again, that was my tribute to, I'm a huge Fender and uh, Fender fanatic. I have an entire collection of Fenders. Um, so I actually named it Leo's guitar because uh, as a tribute to, again, an American cultural artifact in American uh, it's part of American history and a defender and uh, so as a tribute you know I was like look this is what this beautiful culture gave us right uh, mm-hmm. so even the guitar is part of that culture right you, you take a fender and instantly it's associated with blues music so mm-hmm. so that was my again my tiny little uh, tribute to uh, to 
such a historic uh, uh, guitar. Uh, mm. So yeah, that, that's the the little little bit of the story behind Leo's guitar. And then uh, Ken Zephyr's was uh, once I got on a roll. And, you know, honestly, and I wasn't even going to put any of this stuff out there. Right? It was just like, oh, I'll just do it. You know, maybe I'm going through a midlife crisis. I don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't yeah. we all in the midlife crisis? I'll tell you that with a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a you know, a different way. I don't I don't know. You know, it'll be interesting the next uh, few months in the future, right? How everyone's going to come out of it on the other side. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Mm. Uh, uh, but I think I found my footing now, and uh, this you know, going back to music and stuff, it's so therapeutic, especially at this time as well, right? Mm. So you can you know you can do the stuff and stay occupied. And, kills your time. And it, <clears throat> sorry. And it's that level of creativity. Is, uh, man, just listen to that final product. It was so, so exhilarating, right? Um, so that sense of reward is amazing as well. And uh, I'm guessing now so many musicians are probably out there recording stuff. And it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, I mean, you have so much music coming out too. Yeah. And that's amazing as well, too. We'll talk more about your influences, your uh, latest release. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention The Mike Wagner Show get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and over 35 podcast platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more, as well as Anchor FM. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with Izzy from Izzy's Caravan from Finland here on the Mike Widener Show, talking about Leal's guitars, Zephyrs, and... Um, Quite a few releases as well, too, and make a nice comeback in music. And you talk about these influence you had with um, Tom Petty, Buddy Guy, Led Zeppelin, and all the other mentions as well, too. And who are some of your other influences that um, shape you as well, you know, besides blues, rock, and, and everything else? Who are some of your uh, other favorite artists? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, like I said, on the pole, I fully, fully, you know, again, very affectionately, I call it my... Uh, my Johnny Winter record. I love Johnny Winter. Dude. This guy was just absolute. You know, it's like uh, it's that level of energy is unparalleled, right? I mean, um, and so when I even started writing it, I had these ideas, and uh, you know, I don't. I really, uh, really stress for for even young guitar players and stuff. That you know, when you listen to a lot of these guys, don't try and just mimic them, right? And, I use them as a reference point to sort of build your own identity. So what I do a lot is I listen to a lot of music. Um, and so going back prior to recording uh, uh, on the pole, uh, I was really, really, really investing a lot of time in old Johnny Winter records and stuff and, uh, you know, getting a feel of what he does. So, uh, so even this record, I mean, again, I'm not saying it's anywhere near as good as what he did, right? Or sort of elevating myself to his status. <laughs> <laughs> I do Johnny Winter records now, right? Uh, but it's, uh, but using that as a, as a platform, uh, uh, to create your identity and, it's, and your sound, right? Uh, that was uh, that was really fun. So Johnny Winter is a huge influence. Um, <clears throat> Buddy Guy. Buddy Guy is, you know, he's an American treasure, but he's a global icon, right? I mean, this man is just a walking, uh, you know, encyclopedia of the blues, right? I mean, what a trip it must be to, you know, having had, live that life, right? Uh, so he's a huge influence. Um, going back even for the Lightning Hopkins, the big, big, big influence on me. I mean, he's a giant. Uh, and listening to his records was really, really cool because, they, again, they're just so raw and that's where, you know, everything was sort of kicking off. And and the stories these guys tell, that, that really fascinates me as well. Um, mm-hmm. 
So, and they were so unapologetic about what they did, right? It was they weren't bound by these sort of uh, compulsions that you have nowadays, particularly with the guitar and stuff. That oh, you got to play this fast, and you got to have this equipment, and this pedal, and this. Blah, blah, blah. That's when you're going to be classified as a good musician. Um, <clears throat> I think listening to a lot of these guys also breaks away those uh, those artificial layers that young guitar players may put on themselves that they feel that there's this compulsion to you know, play fast and technical and virtuosity and these fancy terms that are thrown about. Um, so in terms of feel, yeah, I was just listening to guys like Buddy Guy, and, uh, Johnny Winter, of course, Clapton, you know, wow. Uh, what do you say about Clapton, right? I mean... Oh, one, one of my faves, a legend. He's great in concert, too. I'll tell you that. He is fantastic. Yeah, and that's a cool thing. I, you know what I really listen to a lot is their live videos and stuff, um, because you just pick up on these little, you know, nuanced sort of playing styles and these little quirks that they have when they play live. And that's when you're like, wow, that's what he's. <laughs> uh, you know, so so that's all. Yeah, but Clapton, dude, what do you say about this guy? I mean, and you know, he's always so humble, and you know, I uh, gets up on stage. I was listening to his. I was watching one of his Crossroads uh, concerts, and he's there in his, you know, blue button-down shorts and his bizarre footwear, and that's him, you know, but he just, you know, who cares, right? What he played was just, you know... As long as you get up and play. And I remember watching him in Chicago with my wife and um, we had the obstructive view seats and he went backstage behind the bongo drummer and played for the ones that are in the obstructive view. He does it for everybody. Make sure everybody's accommodated. You know, that's the type of people I love having as well. So that's, that's just amazing, you know, how they go the lengths, almost like Bruce Springsteen, playing every note for every fan, making sure everybody's accommodated. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's where... Uh Going to live shows is, is such a treat, right? Um, and that's when you really sort of realize that, uh, you know, rock and blues, and, you know, when it's sitting at a club or watching, you know, Rolling Stones with 60, 59,000 other people, right? It, that trip is, uh, you know, it's, it's a lifelong experience. And, uh, you know, like we're talking about it right now. I mean, just, you know, for Clapton, I mean, doing something like that probably was just, natural to him but a fan that you know you take that away as being such a, a profound experience in your life that wow look at this guy right i mean he got up and came behind the bongo drum to 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 just accommodate the rest of the audience as well so so that's such a that's such a cool feeling mm -hmm. it is too and of course he talked about uh you know taking a little bit of this taking a little bit, bit of that and everything else so so it sounds like what you did for on the pole like say took a bit of eric clapton a bit of buddy guy or a bit of muddy waters led zeppelin tom petty you know took a bit of those and formed them all to form your sound on your latest on the pole that's what it sounds like yeah that that's 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 what it is I, in all honesty it's uh again it's nowhere uh you know i should have had that level of uh you know conscious humility to never sort of compare myself to them because they did it so well, right? I mean, who's ever going to match what Stevie Ray did, right? Or Tom Petty's songwriting skills. I mean, it was, you know, some people just are so gifted. Um, but that's what we can do, right? I mean, uh, especially now because, um, you know, there is a void. Um, and of course, a lot of these things are debatable, but there is a void. I mean, uh, these guys... You know, they've lived their lives and they've, they're, you know, they're making way. I mean, um, on a tragic level, you had Little Richard pass away recently. And, you know, there's no more Chuck Berry, you know, no more. Mm -hmm. So there is that void that needs to be uh, filled because this, I, I don't think the blues is going anywhere. I mean, we can debate to death about, you know, rock is dead and da da da, da right? But... The blues is there. I mean, it's an unshakable foundation. And uh, I think that voids, uh, again, I'm not saying I'm the guy to fill it, but I'm sure, you know, maybe uh, a few people can pick up my record and say, okay, you know, at least there's that sense of traditionalism, which I'm really proud of. I really, you know, uh, it's raw, it's gritty and grimy. I deliberately try to make it sound slightly unproduced. Um, I do appreciate that whole sort of, I come from that Light and Hopkins school where when, you know, listening to his records, you can see that he's just playing on the spot. And some songs, you can tell that the producers 
told him, you know, cut it off, cut it off. And you see that vague sort of abrupt ending. So I like that authenticity. And uh, on this record, I really picked up on that level of authenticity. And you can, you, you'll even hear that, the, you know, there are a couple of notes which are not, and I'm open, I'm, I'm saying that that's what it was because um, I played it as raw and live as I possibly could from a very deliberate uh, uh, standpoint. Mm-hmm. And what are your thoughts on today's blues? Uh, I, I, I like it. Uh, you know, of course, sometimes, it, uh, you know, just again, getting back into this and being on a lot of these shows and stuff. Uh, it was really cool because I heard a lot of artists that I would probably never have heard of before. So, uh, so you know, again, sort of connecting uh, back into this business and seeing, you know, uh, having that level of exposure. Uh, being on radio shows and stuff, podcasts and stuff. And, and suddenly a lot of these artists are coming, you know, at least in my line of vision. And I'm like, wow, you know, these guys are doing phenomenal stuff. And kudos to them, right? They, they're also, so it's just not me, right? It's just there are a lot of people out there who, uh, who are still upholding those sort of traditions and values and uh, keeping that music, uh, not alive, but keeping that music going. Uh, um, so, so it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And that sounds amazing, too. We'll talk about On the Pole and what's coming up next in 2020 for Izzy's Caravan. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be here on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen to over 35 podcast platforms on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, along with iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with Izzy from Izzy's Caravan here on the Mike Wagner Show talking about the history of blues, his influences, and also his EPs, Leo's Guitars, Zephyrs, and a lot more. Let's talk about your latest that's coming up um, around June or so. It's called On the Pole. And tell us all about the album and what influenced you to uh, come out with On the Pole. Yeah, so this was, uh, you know, again, this is, uh, I affectionately call it my, my Johnny Winter record. And it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, literally like getting into a, a Corvette and just gunning it. Right. It's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's an absolute, you know, it's something where if I'll ask myself, Hey, what do I want to listen to when I'm, when I'm going on a drive? And, it's as if this this is the answer to that question, right? This is what I want to listen to when I'm in the car. It's fast. It's uh, complete from the get go, from the first second. It just it's literally fires in all cylinders, right? Right to the last door of the EP. You know, and I actually like the idea of EPs now because um, they, you know, it's rather than sort of spending more time with the album, this, that sort of circulation rate is much, much faster. But with this EP, uh, uh, it's it's just rapid fire rock and roll, right? Blues and rock. Um, so it's got four tracks. The first one's called On the Pole. The second one's called Drowning Man's Blues. That's that's one of my favorite songs I've ever written. And again, you can you can hold me to this, right? Uh, you know, a decade from now, you're asking, this is still one of my favorite tunes that I've written personally. Um, and it's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool song. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I'm just getting a, a lyrics video made for it as well. Um, and it's just about some degree of escapism. So, um, so it's my tribute to uh, to the Delta in Mississippi, where a lot of the blues came from, and it's a sort of uh, you know this fiction piece where this guy is going through a rough point in his life, and all he wants to do is go to the Mississippi and play the blues, right? So in, in uh-huh. essence, it's about me seeing the world through my eyes, uh, you know, so, but through this, you know character in the song and it's, it's just a really really cool song uh, you know a lot of loud guitar is fast uh, so it should be fun um, then there's another track called Boneyard Blues which is just naughty uh, 
Uh, right. It's just a, just a downright naughty track. Uh, and we figured, you know, hey, man, let's have a little bit of fun with this one. Uh, so, but it's really funky. It's got a cool blue shuffle. Uh, in fact, one of the, the chorus, uh, not the chorus, sorry, the solo part and stuff, I remember when I was, uh, when I was putting, I was actually listening to a lot of Little Richard at that point. And, uh, you know, just the way it's so upbeat, you know, the groove and the shuffles and stuff. Uh, so, the cool thing was uh, the, the solo part of it was actually a shuffle that, that I got the idea from uh, from listening to Little Richard. And, uh, so that was cool. And then the last one is called uh, Whiskey Alley Blues, which is, uh, again, it's sort of like a really bluesy fiction fee, uh, uh, piece of fiction uh, around the whole sort of Robert Johnson story, right? With the whole going to the crossroads and this, that, you know, uh, uh, so it's just a play on that. And, uh, and it was really cool doing that as well, you know, just uh, sort of deviating from that story a little bit it's, uh, by having that whole sort of journey where this guitar player goes to uh, the crossroads and, you know, he wants to play at this place called the Whiskey Alley Blues and stuff. Uh, so in a way, it's, it's a really, really fun bluesy rock record, uh, um, something that I'm personally really proud of. I mean, I didn't get, like I said, you know, when the production finished, I was... I, it was so hard letting go because I was, I had so much fun with this record. I had so much fun. Um, and I'm kind of like a little, you know, uh, like I said, you know, go experiencing some degree of withdrawal down and, uh, I don't have to get up and, you know, lay down a track or play a solo or do something. Mm. Uh, but it, it's a really fun, fun blues record. It, it sounds like it as well, too. A little bit of rock and roll hoochie coo. So don't forget that with your influence, Johnny Winters. So, <laughs> <laughs> and of course you can also find on the pole as well too and uh if you want to hear the uh full song on the pole of the tile track you can listen to the audio version of the mike wagner show and um is he just a few more things uh before we go here and you've been fantastic love it have you back in again soon and what are your upcoming plans for 2020 and beyond what can we expect on you you know i i would have really loved to have taken this EP on the road, but uh, well, that's not going to work out. So, um, and again, it's, uh, you know, I guess I'm a, I don't learn my lessons, right? And uh, already I'm looking to a December uh, release for another, for my next EP. Um, so, I, like I said, I've got so many tunes lying around and I figured, you know what, let's just keep this going. Let's, let's keep this momentum going. Um, so we're already uh, laying, the, you know, in the sense of, uh, Mentally, I've got the ideas. Probably, I'm going to take a week off, uh, get my bearings right, recalibrate a little bit, and, uh, and start recording again, man. So yeah, I'll be mm. back in December next uh, next release already, and then hopefully next year really hit the road a little bit, do some shows. Uh, you know, that's a, that's what we live for, right? So that's a whole objective kind of. So too bad. Sounds great. This year. Yeah. Sounds great. We're looking forward to having a guy in 2020 and keep us up to date. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Um, in terms of uh, musical influences or just... It, uh, it, it, can, it can be music. It can be anybody or whatsoever. So, you know, you can pick and choose. You know, honestly, right now, I got to I gotta give a shout out to, uh, to uh, Michael Stover from MTS. Um, who does... Uh, all my publicity and stuff. This guy, he literally, man, he was, uh, he took a gamble on me. Uh, he's just the most supportive, uh, most supportive uh, influence I have right now. Um, always positive, always upbeat. Um, and he's really given me that sort of uh, psychological boost. Because look, it's, it's tough uh, in this in this business, especially, especially now, right? Uh, and I honestly, when I came back, I didn't know any anything about all the changes, tech changes, uh, how to navigate in this sort of complex business. And I don't lose a minute of sleep about this stuff now. Um, this is the level of uh, belief and confidence that I have. And he's been just the, the, the rock on which uh, I do this now. So big, big shout out to him. That's fantastic. And, and one of the best as well, too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, I, you know, based on this, uh, you know, I think at this point, honestly, some degree of introspection is so important right now. Uh, this is, you know, being in this regulated and in this new uh, 
completely new phenomenon and none of us have ever experienced. Um, you know, it's a good time to get to know yourself a little bit, right? Um, and maybe, you know, for uh, if you've had a passion in life that you've always been hesitant in following, uh, this might be a really great time to, to pick up that guitar or that piano or that violin or whatever you want to write a book, uh, a children's story or something, anything. Start, you know, there's it, it's just... It's, everything is so accessible now, and this is, us, you know, some level of productivity and introspection based on who you are and what you always wanted to do. Uh, I say follow that right now. This is the best yeah. time to do it. And I think that's the best advice there is. Once again, Izzy from Izzy's Caravan, a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to you having you again soon, sometime 2020 and beyond. Before we go, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people purchase or listen to your music? Yeah, um, just head out to um, www.izzyscaravan.com. That's where all the latest is on uh, all the previous stuff, all the previous music is up there, um, the new stuff, all the latest on um, uh, the new records, uh, some good reads on interviews and stuff. Uh, so yeah, check out the website. It's loaded, it's packed with stuff. Uh, check out my stuff on YouTube. And, um, you know, I being an introvert, yes, I guess uh, having an Insta Instagram account is now uh, a compulsion <laughs> and I do have that. <laughs> but, you know, uh, but yeah, if you like to see pictures, I mean, I know what I look like, so I don't put up a lot of pictures of myself. I don't know how to take a selfie, honestly. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but if you want to see some cool pictures of guitars and my cat, who's my best friend, uh, head out to Izzy's Caravan on Instagram and uh, you know, uh, delve into my life a little bit, man. Yeah. Sounds sounds great, Izzy. Once again, Izzy's from Izzy Caravan. Big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep this up to date. Love you. Have back on 2020 and beyond. You've been fantastic. Cheers, man. It was amazing. Thank you for having me. Here. And here we go.
Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 